project for today is to see if we can get this three horsepower Delta shaper up and running. Now I just bought this, it's an old used model. Now why I bought the shaper is, as you may know, we're building a sauna and I have to cut a whole bunch of tongue and groove paneling. And I was gonna do this on the router table. You can see I've done some test bits, but I have a friend who convinced me that if I did all the paneling I wanna do, as well as you know roof decking and so on that I need to do, that I was highly likely to burn out my little Bosch two and a quarter horsepower router. So I bought this shaper used at an online auction. Uh, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. It was in a working shop. The winning bid was $270, which is a pretty good deal for a three horsepower shaper. Uh, I also bought, since I won the shaper, for $30, this crosscut jig for coping the end rails of doors and such. Um, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. It is missing a power cord, so that's the first thing I have to sort out. You can see obviously it does not include the original factory wrenches. Um, the fence looks to be in pretty good working order. And the other small issue is that the crank wheel to raise and lower the cutter head is broken and has obviously been jury rigged uh, with a bungee cord for some kind of a stop mechanism. Let's see if we can get all this sorted out. The first job is to get the power sorted out. You see it says warning disconnect power before removing cover. And since there's no electrical cord connecting it, I think I'm safe. Back of that panel conveniently includes a wiring diagram which shows me that I'm going to connect my 220 volt single phase power on L1 and L2. And examining the box, that would be these two terminals here and here. Power cord, I bought this heavy duty 220 volt extension cord on Amazon and I'm just gonna cut off the female end and wire that to the box. It was the cheapest option that I could find. The box also is missing the half inch knockout. So I'll put uh, which way to go here. Put that on here. Okay, so I got my two live wires. I also gotta get a ground wire over here. So I can either do a small jump wire, I'll just strip back a bit more of the cable. Hello. Now because I have them on hand, I think I'll crimp a blade on the end of this ground wire. A little bit better connection. Where's the crimper on this thing? There it is. There we go. Tighten up the ground wire. And then feed the two live wires. Replace the cover. Oh.
Okay, here we go. A moment of truth. That seemed like it did what it was supposed to do. There was an OG cutter on the machine, <laughs> which amusingly, when I referred to as an OG cutter with my daughter, she assumed I meant it was original to the machine, which made me laugh, generational thing. Anyway, uh, let's test a, run the piece of wood through it. It seems like it was running pretty smooth. Well, that worked well. I was actually somewhat surprised that the dust port on this thing looks to be closer to a two inch port than a four inch port. I dug through odds and ends of leftover fittings and I think probably the best bet is this one. I can mount that on there. I probably want to cut off this bit because it's all nicely tapered coming into it. That would reduce the dust flow. So I'm going to cut off this part and then connect that here. Now this opening is slightly smaller than that one, so I think in order to maximize airflow, I'm gonna open up the diameter of that a little bit. I still need to leave enough to mount it. And I'll just use my jigsaw for that. I have to snap the plastic in the process. I was happy that I happened to have some machine screws in the right size in my stock. Save me the usual run to Home Depot. So there, I'm happy with that. That gives me a four inch connection. I haven't added to the obstruction at all there for dust flow. This can go back on the fence. So let's try a test cut with dust collection this time. I'm gonna use the shaper in the same location in my shop as where I use my planer. I'm gonna use the same flexible dust collection holes to connect with. I'm actually using the same 220 volt outlet. I'll just swap them out on mobile bases when I want to use one machine or the other. Let's lock down the mobile base and do a test cut with dust collection. There you go, I'm super happy with that. For less than 400 bucks, I have a working three horsepower shaper. Next step is to try these tongue and groove bits I bought for the job at hand. So I have disconnected the power to the shaper and it looks like these fancy looking wrenches are for changing out the shaper cutter. So there's the OG bit that was on there. And let's switch out to one of these tiny group panel bits. They have a insert for a half inch shaft, but this is a three quarter inch spindle. So let's try um, 
Probably. No matter which way up? Probably not. Yeah, it does. It cuts this way. So it goes that way. And then this. So the machine's been well maintained. There. Shaper cover. Changed. Now for this cutter, I'm going to want to change the fence because I won't want this little bar in here for that cutter. I also have to move the posts that the fence is mounted to back to the back holes in order to get the fence in the right position. Got the fence and the depth of cut all adjusted. Let's try it. Let's go. So with the machine again unplugged, we can swap out. The mating cutter head on. And with a little bit of trial and error on the height adjustment, there you have it. A nice tongue and groove pen. Now I just have to cut a few thousand linear feet of it. So that wraps things up for this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.